you, Mike. <laughs> I'm in the enviable position of following Mike, <laughs> replacing Maggie, and after spending 12 hours with Mike on Monday, I'm now beginning to figure out what I don't know about calves after spending 26 years at them. So it's great. <laughs> um, I am just going to go through a few fast points um, that we find are critical at farm level. And it's not going to be a complete story in 10 minutes, but some of the important ones, putting a bit of Mike's theory into practice. And the few things I'm going to cover are the requirements of a calf, having performance and objectives in place, quick bit on developing the room and milk or milk replacer, um, feeding systems. <coughs> I mean, we've heard it all, 20% of our costs tied up in calf rearing. We're up in the north on Tuesday. The six pence per litre gone on your calf rearing before you start. It's a business, it's very important, and we need to measure it. We need to have parameters around it. Um, we want to measure the, the mortality, we want to measure the Growth, growth rates, and what we're doing is we're trying to target, we're doubling that birth rate in 56 days. We're beginning, it's a good time for us now in calves because we give 20 years and I suppose we were, you know, we found it hard to get excited about it or get people excited about it. But with all this new information coming from the likes of um, Mike and Spain and Emer, it's, it's just, it's, it's a great time to be in it. Um, sorry for mentioning it again, and that's all I'm going to do measure all the time. We need to put in enough colostrum, we need to make sure the quality is right in it. Um, and we're still not doing that. Um, I suppose when we're talking about measuring, like, you know, the first thing you'll see is like when the, when the milk collection is there, it's gone out and you're measuring it. Or you're going looking at the phone to see is the butter fat and the, and the protein right. But on most farms still, you know, there's not, there's not objectives set on the, far, on, the, on the farm for heifers and they're not being measured. And, we're a bit at fault ourselves, I would say. If you look, sorry, if you go back where we were only four or five years ago and look at recommendations, I mean, we were still talking about 20, 20 milk replacers. We were still talking about feeding two litres morning and evening, it was economics was driving it. We were talking about maybe, you know, getting 400 grams into the calf. I mean, 400 grams in effect, just control starvation really. It's taking the calf 400 grams to keep the immune system going, to keep warm, and to keep the digestion and respiration going. I mean, it's the bit on the top here. That's what we're worried about. We have to do this. But it's a bit on, you know, Mike talked about getting the growth. How much growth are we going to get up here? And I suppose what we've learned a bit, we've been involved in the computerized feeding, and David White is well known down in Cork here, but David goes out, sets up a computerized feeder, and he's kind of by rota setting it up at 800 grams or 850 grams and often the farmer doesn't know that's happening and the next thing David is coming back in three or four weeks time and he has a very happy farmer because he sees the difference in the calves it's about getting that growth rate up there so you know a healthy calf in a warm environment and low disease give them enough feed and they will grow as Mike said and they grow by as much as the feed you put into them and is it economical I'd say the answer to that is it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day what Mike said is that you can get up to 300, uh, 300 euros worth, you can get up to 1,000 litres in that first. And I mean, I discussed this with Emer, we've been doing work with Emer for four or five years, and I think in the second or third trial we were doing with Emer, um, they took in a hell of a lot of milk powder, they were probably we're looking at double milk powders again, um, as, as the same as Alex Bax work here in Spain, eight litres instead of four, but the costs were the same at the end of the day, even though you had all the benefits got, because if you start that calf right and you get them growing really right, that you get efficiency all the way through. So it's actually not costing a whole lot more, even if you do spend that extra 30 or 50 euro in the first, first 12 weeks. <coughs> Mentioning temperature, Mike, Mike just mentioned it. This is one that is actually, again, on, on the ground, we're finding it's going to get more and more important. I mean, if you look at the last two nights, we went down to four or five degrees and up at 15 during the day. And I mean, the calf, to be actually just neutral, terminal, term, term neutral, needs to be at 15 degrees. Jamie's going to talk about it, a lot about it later. I mean, if I go back to when we were young lads and the mother was rearing the calves, there was always a lamp around the place. And if there was a sick calf, there was definitely a lamp around the place. But it was left there and the younger calves got in there. Those baby calves, as Ola said, they're only two or three weeks old age. They needed heat. And I mean, if they're, if they're not going to get that kind of temperature and the feed around it, they're going to suffer and they're going to get disease. And I'd say, I was in a house there last week, Tom Murphy's in Kilkenny, and Tom just mentioned, um, we were with Martin Cavanagh, Tom just mentioned 
the best thing he brought into the house was the, was the infrared, infra, infrared light. And he says when, the, when it's damp or cold, the calves will go under it. And when it's nice and sunny, the calves will be out, for, out from it. And I'd say we're going to see an awful lot of more of that in calf houses because the two houses I was in since, since we were looking at where we put lights. And, and on top of that, jackets are going to get important there as well on calves. <coughs> what Mike was talking about, you know, I, I just mentioned the economics again. I mean, in that first two months, we're getting huge efficiency in feed, in, in feed, feed conversion. I mean, you're getting probably 50% of your feed is converted into, into, into live weight gain. And, you know, just a year down the road, you're only getting 10%. So it's a good time to be feeding and feeding good quality material. And there's a whole lot going on in there. Mike has mentioned it. You know, you're, you're basically changing a monogastric to a, a ruminant. I mean, you're trying to develop the lungs, the kidneys, the brain, the abs absorption sites, and you're just trying to get, get everything right. And you're, 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 you're moving up to, from where the rumen was 25%, you're moving up to, to a developed rumen of, of 80%, and you're doing that very fast. So again, think all the time when we're in calves, think about babies. Everything you do has to be gentle. Everything you do has to be avoiding stress, and everything you, you do has to, has to be for the benefit of the, of the calf. Um, water, very simple, probably the cheapest thing you have around the place, maybe not so much in, in these years compared to where it was, but a lot of calf houses we walk into, sometimes there's no water there, and often it's very dirty, and if it's dirty water, the calves don't want it. And calf needs quite a bit of water. I mean, when they're getting towards weaning, they'll drink four to five litres of water. And you will not develop the rumen properly. You won't get fermentation unless they have water available. Um, and weaning. Going back to the same thing, stress. I mean, often we'll win and wean the calf, we'll take him off his milk, we'll shove another group in with him, and we'll change his housing. It's kind of bang, bang, bang. I mean, you're, you're not stressing them once, you're stressing them one, two, three times. I mean, stress is a huge factor with calves. So, you just, anything you do, do it consistently and, do, and look after the calf doing it. Um, weaning, sure, you know, basically you want to get the calf eating early. You want to get him eating at, at, at um, upon a week, weeks of age. Mike would say maybe two weeks is good enough. Um, he needs to be eating 200 grams then. And when he's, we, when he's weaned, he needs to be eating about a kilo, a kilo a day for those three days. Um, then you can wean safely. As regards forage, we're basically saying keep away from hay and silages that a small bit of chopped straw is good. <laughs> Feeding milk or milk, or milk replacer, milk replacer, of course, I suppose. Um, we are going to get a good bit of movement towards milk replacer um, over the next couple of years. Uh, the one good thing, and Mike said it, is that milk powder against whole milk. There is a bit of misconception out there. You'll always get, once you get a good milk replacer, you'll get a good performance on the milk replacer as whole milk at any stage. Um, there, ha there is a lot of advantages of milk powder. It does give you a lot of flexibility. Uh, it, it helps in the management of yonis, and it is quite, because it's more consistent, you actually get a lot more scour. There's some major um, studies done that show less scour. There are, you, have to, you have to be set up properly to do it, you have to manage the cash flow to do it, and you know, the, price, the price will depend on, on where milk prices are. But as we said, you need to be feeding a good enough quality um, milk powder. You, know, you need your supplementary acids in there, you need the proper ash levels, proper fibre fiber levels, additives if need be, fat, we use a, a, a mix of 50% um, palm and coconut oil, we've always found that the best. And of course the protein, Mike mentioned a couple of times, getting enough of protein in and getting the proper type of protein in. You want as much milk protein in there as possible and preferably you want a concentrated milk protein or a 60% skin, skin protein. You can, you can obviously with milk powder, it's a case of how dear you make them or how cheap you make them. And by making them cheap, you basically you replace your milk protein with vegetable proteins. Now you can use vegetable proteins that aren't necessarily all bad. The, the, you have soya protein, wheat protein, pea protein, different various of, uh, levels of, of protein in them. But if you really want to make a cheap milk replacer, you take out, you start taking out your milk replacer, your, 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 um, your milk, and you start putting in your, your vegetable protein. And you can actually make a milk replacer five or 600 euro cheaper the more, you go, the more you go replacing it with vegetable protein. So you need to be very careful in what you're doing in it. Um, what else do you want in a milk replacer? Quality, we said the protein quality. You want it to be palatable for the calf, not much point in having good quality in it and won't be able to drink it. You want it to mix well and not be, um, not be wasting time mixing it, and you want it consistent all the time. Um, unfortunately, when you look at a bag, the label doesn't tell you a whole lot about milk replacer. Um, you're, you're, you could look at five milk replacers and it could be 22% or 20% fat and 25% protein, 23% protein, but 
Um, it doesn't tell you the level of vegetable protein in them, it doesn't tell you what kind of fats are in them, and it doesn't really give you a, a clue to the, like, the performance of the calf. It's really what, what, how the milk preparer will perform more than anything else. One thing we come across on the farm all the time, just be aware of how much you're feeding and be aware how you're mixing and be aware of your concentration and just make sure you're weighing away in scales and keep consistent with that because we do find it a fair problem. Um, and I'm finishing up, Matt, with just a mention about um, what kind of systems are out there or what determines it of feeding calves. Um, a lot of things will determine the system, type of housing, your services, your, your number of calves being reared, the amount of labour you have, um, growth targets, whether you're using whole milk or waste milk, and health challenges. The one thing I suppose that's important is whatever system suits the farm. I mean, work around, what, work around the type of housing you have, work around the kind of labour you have, and every system works. It's not about what kind of system you have, it's about the quality of feeding you have, the hygiene you have around the calf, and the husband you around the calf. So system, systems will work. Our, our odd systems will work. I mean, I suppose bucket is still the most common bucket once and twice a day, and the multi buckets, um, great advantages in, in our twice a day feeding as opposed to once a day feeding. I would say definitely for the first 28 days, stick with twice a day feeding. I mean, you, you know what speed your calves are drinking at, you know whether their calf is on or off, you can observe your calves better. There is, I suppose, a fair bit in Ireland of use of, of um, once a day feeding. Works perfectly, but don't do it until you're at least three weeks and preferably four weeks. Um, automatic feeding, I suppose we saw more of that in the past with loads of uh, spring and ad lib or spring and liscarol feeders and, uh, and uh, Legrain and Volek feeders. Not as common now. Um, really work well if your housing is right. Um, leave a lot of moisture around the place, but um, um, can get massive performance out of it. We uh, have been very involved in the computerised feeding, as, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we're very slow with it at the start because we didn't know whether to fully trust them or not. We're totally convinced now, but we know most of our customers are totally convinced about them as well. I mean, right, they save time, there's huge labour saving, but that's not much good unless you use the time properly. I mean, some of the time that's saved in labour should be put to calf husbandry. I mean, there's, there's two things with, with computerised feeders, which we say all the time with calves. They're totally consistent. Consistent temperature, you have consistent amount fed every day, you have the consistent number of feeds every day, so it just takes the variation out of it. And they just do a great job, and just use the bit of extra labour to give the husbandry to the calves. Um, and just the last thing is measure. I mean, it's very simple, you know, there's, there's weighing tapes available there that are 100% accurate, and just make sure you measure and just watch that the performance parameters you're looking after. And basically, Mike, that's about it. Um, measuring and monitoring, take advantage of that early growth pe pe period Mike was talking about, feed enough of good quality protein, um, be it milk or milk replacer, and ensure that hygiene is proper on, on calf houses and not have stress or ca stressed calves. Thanks very much, Pat. Um, could I